Thank you and bless you. Let's lift our hands up real high to the Lord. Reach out your breakthroughs right there. Your miracles right there. Reach out and grab it. By faith, Lord, we, we hold on to you. We grab hold of you. We grab hold of that high calling that comes from you. Father, we pray that tonight you would take us up to a higher place, a place of breakthrough, a place of miracles. Transcend us, transform us, change our ways, O oh Lord. We pray that you would bind the devil, that he would not have any power or any authority in this house tonight. We rebuke every assignment over our church, over our worship leaders, over our pastors. This is your body, Lord. You have your way with us. We are here to serve you. We're here to exalt you. We're here to praise you. We're here to magnify you, Lord. We're here to love you. And we're here to give you praise and glory. If that's you here tonight, you came to give the Lord praise. Why don't you give him a shout right now? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Give it up for our worship team this evening. Say hi to our online community. Turn around and wave hi, they're all watching. You're all having a watch party. Welcome you, welcome everybody. Why don't you greet your neighbor? You can stay standing up too if you like. Let's just be radical tonight. Can we do that? Don't make me work for it. I don't want to work for it tonight. I want some people that love the Lord tonight. How many people love the Lord? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Joe. I am the campus pastor at our Arrowhead campus, downtown San Bernardino. Do we have anybody from Arrowhead campus here today? That's where all the magic happens. Amen. You know, I was going to, we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to walk around. Walk around this place with me. And let's take territory tonight. Because I'll tell you what. If we're to peel back the spiritual realm right now, we would see a great war taking place in the heavenlies. You would see angels fighting against demons trying to bring us a word or a message or relay communication from God. You would see demons attacking people, attacking them at home on their way to church, in families. You would see a lot of warfare going on. If we truly peeled back the spirit realm, we would see that we're all in a fight. Every single one of us is in a fight, including me. Nobody is, uh, 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 nobody kind of gets out of a fight. We're all in it. Do I have anyone here in a battle tonight? If you're not in a battle, then this service is not for you. For the last two months, I have been unable to walk. A spirit of infirmity has come against me for two months. My lower extremities were not working. And I was in excruciating amounts of pain. I was, I had a walker. I had back braces. And it took me about two hours just to get out of bed. And this has never happened for this duration of time. 
And I know that it's a, an infirmity spirit because it's only because I'm doing something for God. And for two months, I've been coming to church, going to downtown campus, and it's been really hard. And I thought that I could weasel out of it somehow and, and, and take a day off, but the Lord wouldn't let me. I would take my walker and I would put it in the back of my car. I would strap on those back supports and I would go to church. Because God said, I need you to preach the gospel. And, and he said, people need to see you fragile. People need to see you struggle. People need to see you in pain. Because they're in pain. They're struggling. And they need to know that you're struggling too. And that we're all fighting together. And so for the last two months, it's been crazy. Really hard. Really hard. But... Over the last two days, I've had some tremendous breakthrough. Tremendous breakthrough. I was going to bring that walker and smash it here tonight, but I said, wait, don't, don't go too far. Let's hold on a little bit. How many of you here tonight in a battle right now? Raise your hand. Raise your hand with me. So I expect you tonight to be the most excited. I don't need to prime you. I don't, I don't need to work you up into, into a frenzy. We need to fight together. We're, we're in a battle together. Do you got my back? I got your back. Do you got my back? Tell your neighbor, do you have my back? I need to know. Don't stab me in the back. I need your back. I... If we're to look at spiritual warfare, we have to look at it in the context of scripture. Because warfare changed from the Old Testament to a fist fight. Some of you still like the Old Testament, don't you? You can't do that no more. Some of you still trying to throw down at Walmart. You can't do that no more. It's a different warfare now. We pray, we praise, we preach the word, we heal the sick, we cast out demons, we intercede, we pray in tongues. That's how we fight. And if you're not used to that, well, you're gonna get used to it tonight, amen? I wanna share with you a portion of the Bible that Paul was ministering on his last missionary journey. We know he did three missionary journeys. On his last missionary journey, Paul would go to this city called Ephesus. And in Ephesus, there would be a tremendous warfare that would take place. And Paul was there on assignment from God. Because God positions us for battle. God raises us up to fight. God raises us up to take territory. To save souls. To help grow heaven's armies. To save the lost. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Is God raising up somebody here tonight to take some territory? The devil's taking your territory, your home, your children, your wife, your brothers, your sisters, your mother. And God is raising you up to fight back. So either we get in the battle or we just sit back and let the devil have his way. That ain't happening. The devil really cautious if he goes to our house because they got me, my wife, and my daughter. And my crazy dog. 
He's going to have a fight on his hands. But Paul in Ephesus, are you guys getting tired yet standing up? Walk, you can walk around with me. I, I don't like religion. I don't like it. I don't like complacency. I, I think we should be the most on fire people on the planet. We don't need to be cookie cutter. You can do what you want here, right? Pastor, is that okay? <laughs> and so let's look at Paul in Ephesus. And let's read here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Many of you know this, this passage already. It reads like this. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. The battle that you're in is not against people. So stop fighting with people. People are not your enemy. People are God's creation. And God wants to save them. And he wants to use you. But if you're fighting with people, he can't use you. So rather than fight with people, we need to fight with the demons that have them bound that make them the way that they are. That's for somebody. I don't know who, but. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Say principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, what I want you to notice and underline this in your Bible, that the word against is used five times. And when the Bible uses one word five times in one verse, it means pay attention. The word against is a Greek word, pros. And it means face to face. It means shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand. It is the closest proximity two people can be. So when Paul says you're fighting against, it means that that thing is right next to you. It's right in front of you. It is literally hand to hand combat. There's another word I want you to recognize, and it's the word wrestle. The word wrestle you see here in Ephesians, it's an interesting word because it's only found here in the whole Bible. It's the only time that it's used here in the book of Ephesians. And the word wrestle is the word pale. Say that with me, pale. And the word pale means to fight against evil powers. From that word pale, we get this other word called palestra. When the word palestra is used and the, with the word pale, it describes a combat arena. There were combat arenas in all the Greek countries and the Roman countries at this time. And so when Paul said Pale against the enemy, the people knew exactly what he meant. In the palestra, they would have three events. The first event would be boxing. How many like boxing? Did you see Fury beat up Wilder this weekend? Never mind. Boxing wasn't like our boxing. Their boxing was different. 
Their boxing, they used about 16 feet of hand wraps. And they would wrap their hands all the way from hand to elbow. And I think I have a picture of a boxer from a Greek statue. And in the hand wraps, they would put nails or spikes or knives. And the two boxers would fight face to face. If the boxer survived the boxing match, he would move on to the next event, which would be wrestling. Their wrestling was not like our wrestling. They wrestled and they gouged out their eyes. They bit each other. It was no holds barred. Break each other's arms. Everything was open. You could do anything to win. And if you survived the wrestling match, you moved on to the third event, which was called the Pancratia. The Pancratia was the most powerful of all the men who fought. They were the survivors of the boxing match, the survivors of the wrestling match. And they were the most powerful. Pan means most, and, and Kratia means powerful. So the most powerful men would meet, and they would fight till the death. And they would fight with clubs, with nails. It didn't matter. Again, it was no holds barred. So when Paul said those words, we pale. Four times he said, we pale against the devil, against adversaries. It was a continuous death match. And the, when, the, when Paul uses that word, we pale, the Ephesians knew what he was talking about. It's like if I said the word football. Everyone here knows what football is. We can, we can understand the game a little bit. Back then, when you said pale with the devil or pale against your enemy, they knew exactly how extreme that, wa that word was. Now, tonight we're going to answer four, we're going to give four reasons why you're under attack. Right now, your legs are under attack because you're getting tired. You can sit down if you want. Walk around is, e is easier. Four reasons why you're under attack. Well, let's go 400 reasons. No, I'm just kidding. Let's see how much our legs can take. Four reasons why we're under attack. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 8 through 9, Paul was getting ready to go to Ephesus and he's saying goodbye to the church in Corinth. And he says this in verse number eight. He says, I will remain in Ephesus until Pentecost for a great and mighty and effective or powerful door has opened to me. And there are many adversaries. A door of opportunity has opened to me. The first reason why you're in a fight is because a door of opportunity has been opened to you. Jesus is the great and mighty door. He's a powerful, effective door that the word is describing. John chapter 10 tells us that Jesus is the door. And anytime Jesus opens a door, 
there's going to be an adversary on the other side of that door. So for every door, there's a devil. Now, why would God open a door and give me a devil at the same time? Why would he give me an adversary, a sparring partner? I thought it would be easy to walk through doors. No, it's not. It's super hard. For every opportunity that God has ever given me, there's always opposition on the other side of the door. And so what we have to get accustomed to is going through the doors that Jesus opens to us and be willing to take the territory. We would be fooling ourselves to believe that we're just going to walk through doors that God opens with no resistance. It doesn't work that way. Every door brings a devil with it. And so some of us may be a little confused. Wow, you want me to go through that door? That door right there? Well, that thing in the way right there, you want me to go through there? Yes, the Lord's like, yes, that door right there. You wanted opportunity? You wanted to serve me? Go through that door. But, 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 the other side of that door, there's a devil waiting there. And the Lord's like, it's all right. Go take care of him. Go get him. Go through the door. And some people don't, don't go through the door. They, they, they don't want to go through the door. They struggle getting through the door. Your whole walk will be a series of doors. Series of, of, of opposition. You're going to go through hundreds of doors in your life. And through every door that God gives you, there's going to be resistance. So get used to it. You're going to have to get used to punching through that door with your word in your hand and with your spirit filled with God and walk through that door and, and do what God's called you to do. David experienced this on the battlefield with Goliath. He said, David, I'm, I'm making you king, but I need you to kill that giant first. I'm giving you a position. I'm giving you rank. I'm giving you assignment. But that, that giant right there, you, you got to take care of him first. There's a door available to you. There's prosperity available to you. There's breakthrough available to you. But you have to go through the door. Is there anyone willing to go through the door tonight? Go through the door of addiction. Go through the door of anger. Go through the door of jealousy, unforgiveness. You got to break through that door. And so the first reason that you're under attack is there's a door of opportunity that's awaiting you. And you're going to have to fight and go through the door. Is there a back door? No. There's no back door. There's no side door. There's no window. Go through the door. Tell your neighbor, go through the door. You guys can sit down. Oh, thank you. I want you to like me, so I'll go ahead and sit down. Acts chapter 19. Let's see the second reason. Acts chapter 19. Then Paul went to the synagogue of the Jews in Ephesus. And he preached boldly about the kingdom of God for three months. But some were stubborn, rejecting the message, and publicly spoke evil curses, watch this, against the way. The second reason why 
you're, re, you're under attack is because you're preaching the word. That's the fastest way to pick a fight with the devil. His, preach the word. Every time you preach the word, whether that work to a, to a loved one, or to anybody, to a stranger, any time you preach the word, you're going to be attacked. There's going to be a struggle. There's going to be a fight. That's why I don't like preaching. I'll confess it right now. I don't like preaching. It's hard. You get nervous. You get afraid. You get attacked. It's difficult. But it's worth it. You're worth it. You're worth it. And God said, woe is you if you don't preach. You're going to be attacked for preaching the word. The third reason, Acts chapter 19, verse 9 to 10. People didn't want to hear the word in the synagogue. The Bible says, so Paul left the synagogue and took the believers with him and had discussions daily in the school of Tyrannus. And this Paul continued for two years so that the people in Ephesus heard the word of the Lord. Now we have another picture here to put up. And the picture is a picture of the library of Celsus. The library of Celsus is in Ephesus, which is now Western Turkey. And in that library, it once held over 12,000 scrolls. And the scrolls were teachings about Roman and Greek false gods. So you can go to the library and learn how to worship demons. The worship that they taught was evil. It was bizarre. It was extremely perverted. It was grotesque, the way that they worship. It was 100% demonic. And you can go there and learn how to do it in Ephesus. Next to the, next to the library there, right there on the left, you see some ruins there on the side? That is where the school of Tyrannus was. And at that school, you could learn how to worship the Greek and Roman gods. Ephesus was completely committed to educating people about the demonic realm. 100% committed. In Ephesus... The devil was making disciples. And Paul was in Ephesus. And he first went to the synagogue, but when nobody would listen to him, he went right there to that school. And he spent two years right there in that place. Teaching about Jesus. Paul spent two years at the devil's school making disciples for Jesus Christ. And he didn't move. He didn't cower. He didn't backpedal. He stood his ground right there in those ruins. Preaching the gospel of Jesus. If the devil's going to make disciples, Paul said, I'm making disciples too. Yeah. 
And when, when God told Paul, I'm going to open up a mighty and powerful door, he was telling him, I'm going to send you into places where no one is willing to go. And in those places, you're going to have huge amounts of resistance. You're going to have a lot of opposition. There's going to be a lot of battles, a lot of fighting going on because you're in the devil's territory. You're breaking into the devil's school. You're breaking into his prison and you're going to preach the gospel there. Most people are trying to break out of prison, not break into prison. Most people are trying to break strongholds, not get into strongholds. But that's not what Paul was conditioned to do. He was conditioned to go through the doors that God opened up for him. And he was conditioned to go inside those places and preach the gospel. And it didn't matter to him if he got beaten for it. It didn't matter to him if he got arrested for it. It didn't matter to him if they liked him or didn't like him. He was there on assignment from God. Tell your neighbor, it's going to be a fight. Nobody goes in the devil's territory and talks about Jesus. There are not too many churches that do that. This one does. This one does. If you didn't know that, come downtown anytime. Anytime, please come. Come down, please. Monday through Saturday, come. Come fight. Come war. Come preach. Come minister. Come lay hands. We need help. And now we're in Pomona. Doing the same thing, aren't we, Pastor Chris? We're in a struggle. Look at Pastor Chris. He's ready to go right now. God chose you to fight, not to cower, not to quit, not to grow weary, but to press in and fight for the gospel and the kingdom of God. And because Paul did this, power was released. God's power was released to Paul. You want power? Preach the gospel. You want power? Go on demonic territory and take the land. Go where everyone else is afraid of. People love power, but they don't, they don't like going through the process of getting it. I'll leave that alone. Look at in Acts chapter 19, how God gave Paul this power. God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. Clothing that touched his skin was placed on the sick and diseases left them. And evil spirits came out of them. God was revealing himself there to show who's boss. There were hundreds of false gods there, but God was showing up to show them, I'm the only God in this place. And the clothes that Paul had, his aprons and handkerchiefs, they were laid on the sick and, and, the, and the diseases left the sick body. They would take his handkerchiefs and his apron and put them on people who were demon possessed and the demons left their body and everybody was amazed. His clothes had anointing on them. I got to get me some of those clothes. Some clothes with power. Yeah, I don't think you can get those at Target. And look at this in verse 18. 
Many who had believed came confessing their sins. Whoo, I love that. Also, many of those who practiced magic brought their spell books and burned them in the sight of all. Good Lord. Even the witches and the warlocks were getting born again right there in Ephesus. And the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Witches were converting to Jesus. People were burning their spell books. People were getting healed. A great power and demonstration of God was made manifest right there in Ephesus. Right where the devil thought that he owned that place. And the devil began attacking. Attacking Paul. Attacking his disciples. And war was breaking out in that city. Because Paul was there to make disciples for Jesus. And so the third reason why you're under attack is because you're making disciples. I got three, three claps. That's okay. It's because you're making disciples. You have a Power 12 group. You're making disciples. You're hosting, you're hosting a Power 12 group. You're ministering to people. You're helping them teach them about the Lord. You're going to be under attack. We need more Power 12 groups, by the way. A lot more. We need everybody to join a Power 12 group. Why, Pastor Joe? Because we're in a fight. That's why we're assembling an army. Do you understand that? We need generals. We need commanders. We need arsenal. We need people who want to fight for take this territory away from the devil. I pray that you sign up tonight. We're not here to kumbaya our way through to Sunday and to the next Wednesday. We're here to take territory for God. If you're not in a power 12, shame on you. I say that's a sin. You're going, I'm going too far. Wait a minute. That's like a sin. The third reason you're being attacked because you're making disciples. Now, if your armor is like all clean, you ain't doing nothing. Like if you saw my armor, my arm, my helmet's on crooked, my sword's bent. I got dents in, in, in my chest plate. My shield has about a thousand arrows stuck in it. It looks like a porcupine. Some of you, your armor's too clean. <laughs> You're sitting on the bench with clean armor. It's like a, on the football field, the guys that never play. Come on. Get in the battle. Get on the field. Get your uniform dirty. Come on. That's why David didn't want Saul's army. I want that clean armor. Get that stuff out of here. You're too afraid to use your own armor? Come on. Trying to give me your armor. Some of you have no armor on. <laughs> I'll stop there. I want you to like me. I want you to come downtown and help us. <laughs> my back's loosening up now I'll be running here in a minute Acts chapter 19 verse th uh, 23 we're going to read the last reason why we're under attack this word's prophetic too because this church is under attack we could feel, I could feel the weight something's about to burst something is about to burst Verse 
Verse 23, and about that time, there arose in Ephesus a great uproar concerning, watch this, this is crazy, concerning the people of the way. <laughs> Man, I almost have to say it again. Um, you guys stand up again with me. And I said, by the word of the Lord, because this is the word of the Lord, that there arose in Ephesus a great uproar. And the uproar was that the enemy was in upheaval. The enemy was in a tumult. The enemy was angry with the people of the way because they were taking the territory of the devil. They were not afraid. They were not scared. They were willing to go to places that no one else was willing to go. Am I talking to any people of the way here tonight who aren't afraid to go into the devil's territory and save some souls, cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead? Is there anybody here ready to do that? The Bible says that there was disruption in the atmosphere. Hell was under attack. I'm tired of hell attacking me. I want to attack the gates of hell. I'm tired of being on the defensive. I want to be on the offenses. I want to strike. The devil was losing converts. People were getting born again. People were getting saved. People were sitting in the school with Paul for two years and learning about Christ. And the devil was angry. He was losing converts. Tonight he's going to lose some more. People are going to get saved tonight. People are going to give their life to Christ. People are going to stop playing games with Jesus and they're going to give their life to Christ. Somebody in here right now is willing to do that. The devil was losing business. They had an idol business in Ephesus. And most of their prophets were for idols of Artemis. But there were no sales going on when Paul was there for two years. Because people were smashing and burning their idols and they weren't buying any idols. Sales were down. Businessmen were upset. Can you imagine that? All the liquor stores get shut down because no one's buying liquor. All the pot shops get shut down because no one's buying pot. Budweiser gets all upset at the way because no one's buying Budweiser anymore. That would be crazy. I want that. And as a result, riot broke out in Ephesus. A riot. Now, I haven't been in, in a street fight like that, in a gang fight like that in a long time. Man, I kind of miss that. I'd probably get beat up now, right? With my bad back, I'll get beat up real quick. But it was a riot. It was, it was the demonic realm getting upset with the heavenly realm. And the people were, were getting all bent out of shape. Mad. Mad at Paul. Mad at the disciples. And they tried to pull him in. They tried to destroy them. They tried, they tried to uh, arrest them. But when God's sending you, he's going to take care of you wherever he's sending you. And Paul escaped from there. And he went on to the next place and the next door and the next door and the next door. And he, keep went, he went and went and just keep preaching the gospel wherever he went. And he did this all the way up until 
they killed him. Wow. What a soldier of God. And the people of the way were under great persecution. Great persecution. And why they were under persecution is the fourth reason why you're under attack. is because of your association. It's your association. You're associated with the wrong people. The right people. Depends on what side of the coin you're on, I guess. My association with God has put me in the middle of a war because I wasn't in the war until I met God. Demons never bothered me. I could do all the drugs I wanted to. I could do anything I wanted to. And no demon bothered me back then. It wasn't until I gave my life to Christ that this fight began. And it was, it's been hard, let me tell you. Being saved is not for the weak, I'll tell you that. Being saved is not for the weak. It's for the strong. And somewhere I read only the strong survive. That's true. The moment you give your life to Christ, you enter into the battlefield. And you get trained for war. Because heaven is fighting right now. And if you listen closely enough, you could hear the clashing of swords and of steel. You could hear the wailing of demons. You could hear the battle going on, even in this room. We're in a fight. And we got to stay together. It's not Hallmark against Arrowhead, against Pomona, against Me against Ever. No, 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 no. We're together. We're one. We're united. I want to go to Pomona and throw down too. I want to go to Mexico too and throw down. But tonight we're throwing down right here at our main campus, our Hallmark campus tonight. And so I'm going to do the hardest altar call ever. I don't believe I'm going to do this. Tonight, if you give your life to Christ, you're enlisting in a battle. And I need you to know that. I need you to know that there will be opposition. I need you to know that there will be challenges. I need you to know that there will be persecution from those that are closest to you. Family members, homeboys, homegirls. People will disown you. People will scour you. And the enemy is going to be extremely angry with you. But I need people here tonight that say, I'm enlisting in God's army anyway. Anyway. Every head bowed and every eye closed here for a moment. If that's you here tonight, and you say, if God is here recruiting for his army, 
And Jesus is his commander. And you want to enlist in that army. All I want you to do tonight is raise your hand. Keep your eyes closed. I want you, those with their eyes closed, just pray. If you're already born again, you're already in, just pray. Close your eyes. Those of you who raise your hand, keep your hands up for me. I want to see them. I see one hand, oh, two hands right there. I see hands in the back. I see a couple hands over here. I know this, is, this might be the smallest altar call ever. And that's okay. Because this is real right now. If your hand's up, I know that you want to enlist in God's army. And we want to prepare you to do that. And so what I want you to do, your hands up, keep your hand up with me. So that I know that your hand is up because you want to enlist in the army of Jesus. I want you just to look at me right now. Just look at me. Keep your hand up and look at me. Thank you for putting your hand up. You're so brave. You're so brave. You're so brave to answer this call. You're so brave to answer this call. I want you to do one more thing. If your hand's up and you're looking at me right now, I want you to come forward. Come forward. Just make your way to the altar right now. Come forward. Come forward. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's give God some praise. The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was gone with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Open to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness I think some, some moms are enlisting their children. <laughs> You're giving your babies to God. If you're, if you're in a battle right now and you're losing, I want you to come forward too right now. You've had huge amounts of opposition and you can't get a breakthrough, I want you to come forward. If you're stuck in a rut, let this say like that. You can't break free from oppression. Some of you are depressed. You're crying at night, cutting yourself. You're in deep depression. Some of you have lots of fear. You're tormented. You have nightmares, night terrors. Come forward and get some prayer. If you're a couple, you're a husband or a wife, and you, you just keep fighting. There's division in the home and you can't get breakthrough. Come forward right now. Come forward right now. Quickly, quickly. Good job. Proud of you. Proud of you. Well, we got more people tonight, Lord, than, than I thought. Look at all these souls. All these new recruits here. Yeah. All right, let's all lift our hands here if you came to the front. Lift your hands high. Let God anoint you for your assignment. The anointing and the power of God is going to come in your life. 
because of your assignment. Your ministry, your assignment, your anointing, your power is going to come right now because God has calling on your life, destiny on your life, and you're going to need the anointing and the power of this Holy Spirit. Both hands up really high. I'm telling you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Talk to God a little bit. Jesus, I give myself to you willingly. I'm laying down my life to serve you and your army. I'm willing and ready. Anoint me for my assignment. Jesus, I ask you to come in like never before. Be my Lord, my Savior, my Commander, my Deliverer. Come in, Jesus. Come in. There he goes. Come in. There he goes. There he goes, sweetie. Come in. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Lord. Come in. Forgive me, Lord, for my sins, my failures. They don't disqualify me because your blood covers them. Thank you for my forgiveness your mercy, your grace. And I choose to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. We bless you. Freedom in this house tonight, Lord. Your freedom, Lord, in this house tonight. Freedom to every family member. Freedom against drugs and addiction. Strongholds broken tonight in Jesus' name. Don't forget this weekend, Sunday, Pastor is preaching on relationship skills. We preach at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock right here at the Hallmark Campus. Don't miss it. This is week three of the series. The first week was on hearing, the communication. You don't want to miss this Sunday at 9 o'clock. Bring a friend, bring a family member, bring him out to service and let God touch him. Amen? I love you guys. God bless you. Have a great evening.